Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar news update video. So, an update on the uh, Roku novel information from yesterday. We have a few extra little pieces, including the description, which is the uh, the main event for this video. So, uh, first of all, uh, Edelweiss have put up this uh, placeholder cover. This wasn't up yesterday, so there has been an update to the listing. There's nothing particularly to say about it. Cover, the actual cover to be revealed hopefully tomorrow at the panel, but I just thought I would show it off. Then, FCE on Instagram posted, of course, he's going to be at New York Comic Con over the weekend at the panel. He's one of the panelists on the Avatar publishing panel, as he notes here, as well as there being a signing. But he also says in his post, I'll be making a truly exciting announcement about the Avatar universe at the panel. So what does this mean? Is it just that he is going to get the opportunity to, in a way, say goodbye to fans at the panel I've done my uh, time on the novels, I've done the four, first four, but Abrams have given me the opportunity to reveal book five to you, who the new author is, it's about Roku, it's called Reckoning of Roku, here's the cover, you know, whatever way they're going to do it, is that what this is? Makes sense, makes a lot of sense actually, I think. Um, or is there maybe something more? You might think that just because like, we do already have the core of potentially what that reveal would be which is just we know it's a Roku novel we have most of the information especially now that we have the description the cover if they have it would be potentially the only new reveal there so it, it there's a little bit of a debate about that because um some places have the listing up for the Roku novel but it's listed as untitled um amulet fantasy series book five which is obviously Chronicles of the Avatar Book 5, Reckoning of Roku, but some places have that kind of like anonymous listing, whereas Edelweiss and Abrams specifically have the f most of the details, basically. And that's kind of part of why you kind of think like, hmm, are they not really trying to keep it a secret? So more than likely, it is just more of the official acknowledgement of this. Maybe the timing on the listings going up could have been a little bit better, because of course, you know, it's always more exciting when you're watching or kind of following along with one of those panels and you get the announcements then and there. But, you know, the listings go up if you follow them. <laughs> this is where it all comes from. But now, the main event here, we have the description for the book. We had this yesterday, but now we get the actual description we've been waiting for here. So, a young Avatar Roku has only just commenced his training at the Southern Air Temple uh, when his erstwhile friend, Prince Sozin, requests his aid in preventing the Earth Kingdom from claiming a remote Fire Nation island. Despite his inexperience, Avatar Roku slips away with the help of an irritating young airbender named Gyatso. As the reluctant companions delve deeper into their wayward mission, they begin to realize that even greater threats lie ahead. Plagued by self-doubt but eager to prove himself, Roku fights for his life and the lives of others while ensuring that the, the hidden secret of the island doesn't fall into the wrong hands. This searing fifth installment in the Chronicles of the Avatar series explores the beginning of Roku's journey from privileged Fire Nation noble to the powerful but indecisive Avatar uh, whose hesitancy may ultimately pave the way for the 100-year war. So interesting stuff so straight away we get the reveal that this is roku at 16 it is going full ya teenage protagonist here and we are choosing to do it at the very 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 beginning of roku's training this training that takes 12 years uh, remember correctly so here we are right at the start his first uh, step along the way is of course with the air nomads at the southern air temple where from um, Avatar and the Fire Lord, we know he meets and becomes friends with Gyatso. So that seems to be what we're kind of filling in here. We're covering the idea of um, initially Roku seems to find uh, Gyatso irritating, but on this kind of random mission that appears out of nowhere from Sozin, they work together and I, I suppose become lifelong friends, a friendship that transcends lifetimes. Um, so that's cool. Gyatso, I'm guessing, will fill that kind of Kavik role within this book. It'll be interesting to see how much attention he gets. Will he get more of a kind of Rangi level of focus or will he get the Kavik kind of treatment as kind of like secondary main character? Interesting to see how that goes. 
But um, I would say this is a little bit kind of unexpected. I think people are maybe a little bit surprised. They haven't gone for a section of Roku's life that maybe there's a bit more going on in, in that the really obvious stuff was, would the novel be where they actually do the whole Legends RPG plot with them? Um, Zaysan, Sozin, the Air Nomad influence on the Fire Nation, seems like they're not going for that because in the RPG, that takes place at the end of Roku's training. So he, he meets up with Sozin again. Uh, his wedding happens basically when he's about 28, 29 years old. Because uh, again, he meets with Roku. Uh, Roku comes back, meets with Sozin. And then he says like, and a few months later, he was my best man. So that's what we're talking about there. This is obviously taking place 12 years before any of that stuff happens. So if we're, if we're dealing with that at all, it's the early setup for that stuff. Now, who knows? Maybe Roku being here at the Southern Air Temple meets a young, you know, a young Kandro or something like that, a young character. Maybe he through introducing them more to what's happening in the Fire Nation, maybe inspires some of those air nomads to maybe try and teach people in the Fire Nation some stuff about things. Um, there's there's always the way to connect the dots here with this stuff because it is part of the general same era. But we are very early. So in terms of Roku, as far as we're aware, he should be a master firebender, but maybe only basics with airbending. I do wonder where he's at when it comes to like water and earth. Can he just not bend at all? Or does he, is he at least able to control it, but he just hasn't had any training yet? It all depends on how much of a prodigy that I suppose they're going to try and portray him as. That's going to be a bit of an interesting one to see where he is. Because if, if, if this is like Roku, maybe with just one element, what if he hasn't actually done any airbending yet? That would kind of be interesting and a little bit different from what we're used to. Like, especially, say, like, Yang Chen, who was, like, a fully realized avatar throughout all of her books in or around the same age. It's it, interesting to see the, the contrast between, like, that and then Roku having more of the typical training as the avatar, where he's only told at 16. So they seem to be emphasizing in the description the idea of, like, privileged Fire Nation noble and now he's kind of in this position of like he's living at the Southern Air Temple for the next couple of years. So because it is so early on his Avatar journey, like he, he literally maybe only days ago has found out that he is the Avatar and his life has been turned upside down. Um, I assume we might get some a lot of moments with Roku reflecting on kind of his previous life in a way that he was a Fire Nation noble, his friend Sozin. Um, because of that, like that would suggest that like stuff like his family, like we don't know what's the deal with like Roku's parents. Um, we probably assume he doesn't have siblings, but you know, there, there's a way to do things. How high up in the nobility was he? Um, there's a there's an opportunity to actually address little moments like that, like another avatar and their parents. That that's interesting to me, because I think they're they're highlighting that, like he's maybe going to come into this a little bit on the privileged side, but come to realize the differences of the four nations to get to the point where he is a character who is so willing to defend that kind of idea of the four nations need to be their own thing, need to be four, because during his training, he spent all these years living in each of these different nations and has come to gain that experience and understanding of the nations, which is why, as an adult, he is such a competent avatar, able to, you know, keep peace for as kind of long as he did. <clears throat> until kind of the Sozin incident kind of really kind of takes off kind of later in his life, basically. And um, so what, what the plot that we're getting here, Sozin requests his aid. I'm guessing that means Sozin has sent a letter because uh, as far as we're aware from Avatar and the Fire Lord, uh, Sozin and Roku don't meet for 12 years after Roku begins his training. Like we literally see the scene of their reunion after 12 years. So this has to be a message just gets to the air temple in secret, probably from Sozin, because this seems to be the idea that Roku has to slip away to do this mission. So clearly the the elders at the temple uh, guiding his training 
don't want him actively doing stuff as the Avatar yet because he's only been the Avatar for a couple of weeks, basically. Um, which by itself is an interesting thing. How managed is an Avatar when they do the typical training? Is the plan literally that he only gets to actively be the Avatar when he ends his training at 28? I don't think that's the idea. He's, <clears throat> he's doing some on-the-job stuff already through as a Fire Nation avatar, interacting potentially with the leadership of the Southern Air Temple uh, and just, you know, representing the Fire Nation here at the Air Temples. That's like obviously part of it, learning about the culture of the Air Nomads through this airbending training. Um, but it seems like it is a thing where if this is a, a proper issue within the world, his advisors are telling him that as the avatar, he should get involved in this. Instead, it is a personal request from a friend to a friend, Sozin to Roku. Um, so interesting that it happens so quickly as well. So what's happening here, of course, Sozin wants to prevent the Earth Kingdom from claiming a remote Fire Nation island. Now, if you've read the RPG... <clears throat> you will immediately be aware of there is a conflict like this in the Roku era material. Uh, it's over Natsuo Island. Now, admittedly, like I said, the RPG stuff is set when Roku's about 28 years old, uh, give or take. So this is something, uh, an issue that does it start here and then linger on for 12 years? Or are we talking about a different island? Because there's a lot of Fire Nation islands. The fact that it's listed as remote, whereas Natsuo Island is a specific named island, that even in the Yang Chen books, when they're looking for an, a kind of un unmarked island on the, on the map, they note that, oh, it's near the Natsuo Island, like chain of islands. And that's in the generations before this, in Yang Chen's era. So... I'm going to lean on the side of, I'm probably going to guess it's a different island. Maybe this is where Natsuo Island comes into kind of prominence a little bit. But uh, I'm thinking just for the sake of like all this other stuff that they go on to talk about, you know, there's threats on the island and especially the idea of like ensuring the hidden secret of the island doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Probably that feels like something that they need to kind of um, maybe develop a new island. There's maybe the chance it is that the Chaisi Island, Project Unanimity Island, that would be really cool to see what that means in this era, so long on from the that project and that story in the Yang Shen era. It would be a very cool connection between the novels, but we just don't know what the, the situation is here. So for, for whatever reason, Roku going ahead with this mission, ends up having Gyatso follow him. So I, I guess they've maybe had a few run-ins, a few interactions here. They don't get on super well. Roku seems to find him irritating, but Gyatso tags along, along and we're going to see these two actually become friends over the course of this book. Um, the mission goes wayward, so that's interesting. And and, and that's the point. They, they have to go from the Southern Air Temple uh, up north, to a remote fire island uh, that I guess is in between the Fire Nation and the Earth Kingdom, hence the uh, conflict here. Um, so how are they getting there? I'm guessing Gyatso might have a, a Sky Bison or do they have to take one that's not theirs? And we get into those sort of ideas. Um, that's an interesting one. Um, Fang, you know, at what point during Roku's life does he find Fang? It's probably a bit early for that, but... I, I, I don't know, they, they probably need to have time to kind of grow up together is, is also the thing as well. But um, I don't know, M maybe that's for book two, if there is going to be a book two of Roku, because that's kind of the other thing here. Nothing in the description so far confirms it to be a duology, I, but I'm assuming that's more information that will probably come out from the panel. There's just a general assumption that they're doing these books in twos, but uh, we'll see what exactly happens. Um, so yeah. Plagued by self-doubt, I think that makes sense. You can tell Roku is not a particularly confident character in the early stages of um, Avatar and the Fire Lord. When it comes to sort of even like talking to Ta Min, uh, you can tell he has a lot of doubts about the idea of like, I'm the Avatar, really? Uh, he doesn't kind of trust himself to, to, to be good enough in a way to be the Avatar. <clears throat> and I'm guessing this is going to fit into the kind of whole idea of 
maybe being like indecisive and not really knowing what to do. And um, that's going to be an interesting one as well. So he has to fight for his own life and the lives of others while ensuring that the hidden secret of the island doesn't fall into the wrong hands. It's very difficult to speculate on that until we know what the island is or any details beyond that. Um, but I think the interesting point in this, that that's probably the bigger kind of latch on point, is just the idea that the Earth Kingdom is being presented as the kind of enemy, the villain within this plot. That it is a Fire Nation island and the Earth Kingdom is trying to claim it. Now, what I think is super interesting to note here is actually to draw your attention to a different event in the Roku era that is very conveniently timed at roughly the same time as this. And that is an event of the Earth Kingdom, the Night of the Silenced Sages, which is basically uh, Earth King Jialun, who I think pretty much has to, I think that, that this event confirms he is the Earth King at the time of this novel. He basically gets rid of the Earth Sage, <laughs> Sages all in one go. I'll bring it up here just so you have a little bit of context for it. So the Night of Silent Sages. When Roku had only just begun his journey to master the four elements. Where have we heard that before? The description for the book. Uh, the Earth King experienced a seismic change no one dared acknowledge. The end of the Earth Sage Order. The Earth Sages were weakened since Kyoshi's time, of course. Um, they spoke out against Earth King Jialun's changes to the Constitution. Um, that Kyoshi and the 46th Earth King drafted. Then in a single night, Jailun sent out Dai Li agents to round up every last Earth Sage. No one knew where they went, and those who dared look for the Sages disappeared as well. By the end of the week, the people learned to remain silent about the Sages. Uh, then the Earth Temples opened, rebranded as Royal Learning Halls, and that whole thing is gone. Might that be something that's happening in the background of all of this? Either way, it's something to keep in mind in terms of why the Earth King is a little bit of a kind of a, <laughs> a menace during this era is that he's already done this in his own nation and now he's after some secret on this Fire Nation island. So you kind of wonder like is Sozin scheming in the background? There's probably some element of politics about this island going on from Sozin but this actually seems like hey we actually need to stop the kind of crazy Earth King uh, from doing something on this island but what is the secret? Does it relate to sages, fire sages, Bonte tribe sages, um, earth sages? We we just don't know. But it's it's interesting that that event has potentially just happened, is happening at the same time as this, or is about to happen, right around the time where this book is set. Um, but again, uh, I'll be doing uh, more content to speculate more in detail about uh, this novel coming up shortly. Um, so um, my coverage for the panel coming up uh, tomorrow, I will do a video immediately after the panel ends uh, covering what news that has actually come out, if any. And then on Sunday, I will be doing a live stream where, again, we can live stream, kind of chat about any news that has come out of the panel. Of course, the Roku novel news that we have already will do speculation. And uh, we can also go through the Roku era RPG material more and try and pick out any pieces of kind of lore details from later on in Roku's era that might kind of happen in the book. Um, I think it will be an interesting way to do it, to do a little bit more of a Roku focused uh, stream. Plus, if the Korra comic news, if we actually get it and it's big, we can talk about that as well. Um, it should be exciting times, lots of news coming out and hopefully the panel tomorrow actually delivers. But uh, that basically is the video. So in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on the description for the book. What are your thoughts on where this is set and potential ideas for this story? And then do you think the FCE announcement is just this book or do you think there's something more? Let me know below, but uh, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.